Welcome to a 6-5 Live. It is very early here in Chicago in Austin, and Daniel and I are here to talk about, analyze, uh, pull apart Qualcomm's acquisition of Nuvia for $1.4 billion. Daniel, how are you, my friend? Morning. Love this. Uh, late last year, we were waking up early, uh, one tie after another. It was uh, Xilinx, and then it was In5 with Marvell and semiconductor industry. Consolidation continues. Exciting news. And, and by the way, you were early on this one, Pat, talking to me about Nuvia long before I even knew what a Nuvia was. So this is a big day for the company. Yeah, I really had a I had a hunch uh, about this company uh, just based on uh, the founders and and some of the folks that I've known uh, for close to uh, twenty years, uh, like uh, John John Bruno, uh, one of the co-founders I actually worked with at uh, at AMD. And you know, when when you have that personal relationship, it it really does uh, r really does make uh, a difference. And you know, Daniel. Uh, so, uh, semiconductors are just going bonkers. Uh, I think it's the biggest contributor to me losing sleep uh, versus my dogs that I sleep with, my my Frenchies, uh, because everybody wants to call me late at night. And I, I, I had the chance last night to catch up with um, uh, CEO-elect uh, Cristiano Oman uh, to uh, to talk through that. I d definitely appreciate the, uh, the, the, uh, the heads up uh, on it. Yeah, it was good to get um, a look a little bit early. And of course, we can never share that. But sometimes, you know, we know what we know what we know. And, and uh, you know, when I saw this drop um, immediately, Pat, I said, Qualcomm's taking control of its future. I said, this is a very interesting move. Nuvia, um, while it is kind of like you said, not a household name yet, if you are in semiconductors, the, the founders of this, former Apple, Google, Arm, AMD, Broadcom, top execs went over here thinking, you know, they're, they'd be able to solve a big problem here. And, and Qualcomm, you know, with what's going on with ARM and NVIDIA, um, the ecosystem is kind of eager to see more more options, more choice potentially. Um, and so I think what Qualcomm saw here was a chance to really enhance its CPU portfolio uh, to, to Pat really, like I said, kind of put its destiny in its own hands here um, more and more by bringing in these capabilities to power um, everything from its next generations of smartphones to its growing laptop business, as well as its vehicle business. Yeah, you know, uh, you talked about um, uh, the background to these folks, and essentially they were many of the brains behind uh, M1, Apple's M1 processor, and I believe uh, what's going to be the follow-on. And uh, yes, I know a lot of people are involved, and there are still some really good people at Apple, but, but these are the folks who basically did the uh, CPU architecture, uh, the SOC architecture and all of the modeling that uh, that 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 went uh, uh, around this. Um, let me uh, uh, let me uh, give you a quick uh, a quick peek here. Here's my Forbes article I wrote this morning, and uh, Daniel also wrote um, an article on his uh, Future Research website, and recommend that you check it out. But uh, we've got John Bruno uh, again, X A M D Apple and Google, uh, Gerard Williams uh, and Manu. Uh, Gelati. So it's kind of cool to see uh, uh, these guys. I had a lot of, uh, you know, close meetings uh, with them to get the the inside scoop and, and it's good stuff. So let's uh, break, uh, let's break this down. So uh, we already talked about uh, this, the, the skill sets. Uh, let's talk about the deals, all cash deal, $1.4 billion, which by the way, I, I, I just think is a, a total, uh, I just think is a total steal. Okay. Uh, they had just entered uh, round B, uh, 240 uh, million dollars, uh, so they hadn't burned uh, burned through that cash. Uh, but but the amount of value I think Qualcomm is is getting here uh, is 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 staggering. And uh, if I look at Qualcomm, so they have intellectual property, uh, IP, uh, and they have uh, silicon uh, that they sell uh, to to partners, and they they license the IP, and they also use a lot of that IP to create their own. And and Daniel, I think it's uh, safe to say that when it comes from a wireless point of view, uh, Qualcomm is is second to none. And, uh, you know, the digital side uh, on the modem and the now the, the mobile RF side where they generate more revenue than any other mobile RF company, uh, GPU is really good. 
Uh, their DSP is really good. And I, I, I believe that their NPU is, is really, really good. And the, the thing that just, you know, always stuck out was the CPU because they licensed that design uh, from, from ARM, which by the way, uh, a lot of folks have made a lot of money uh, doing that. But I think uh, with Qualcomm expanding in new markets like automotive uh, and edge infrastructure and uh, getting into the PC market, uh, it was very evident to me for a very long time that um, Qualcomm had to make a change. Uh, they either had to create their own, uh, buy their own, or uh, ARM license something that would compete head to head uh, with, uh, with, with, with Apple. So to me, I, you know, I look at their IP portfolio, it's hard for me to, to, you know, find a, find a weakness at this point. Yeah. This gives a, a whole new world of capabilities. It really sets the company up well. Um, especially as we see consolidation continue to happen. Um, I think no matter what happens in the coming year with some of the big deals that are pending, uh, companies want to make sure they're protected, uh, that, uh, you know, they can continue to develop and innovate on products without having some sort of shift in the ecosystem really slow down or create issues. And, and Qualcomm knows the licensing space all too well. It's been through so much over the past few years, whether it was with Apple or whether it's with regulators. And so this smaller um, uh, company acquisition, it's probably not going to see extraordinary scrutiny. It adds to the capabilities immediately, like you said, um, the kind of one area where the company had been more dependent on ecosystem as opposed to within its own walls. So that, that really opens up the gate, uh, the gates for the company as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm super encouraged by, it. again, it is still earlier days for Nubia. This is a company with a huge proven uh, product, but Pat, you know, one thing you point out in the headline of your article, and I know, you know, we only want to spend another minute or two here, but um, the partner ecosystem seemed thrilled about this. Uh, you know, we saw, we saw Microsoft, we saw Google, we saw General Motors and Continental Tires. We saw Xiaomi and Oppo. Uh, we saw, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, Asian based uh, device makers, U.S. based automotives and, and big uh, tech companies here in the U.S. and software companies, all of them seem to feel very encouraged that this would only enhance the partnership, the existing relationships, um, and that it gave seemed to give these companies confidence that Qualcomm could be a more important, more prolific partner in their futures. But doing this a long time, Daniel, and I have I have rarely seen on something like this uh, such an outpouring of support. 18 industry leading companies, like you said, in, in ecosystems, smartphones, PCs, and automakers. And, and I'm sure as a follow up, we're going to see this in, 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 in infrastructure. Uh, and I also haven't seen um, um, Google and Microsoft in, in, in a joint press release uh, line listed uh, like this, so, so close together. Uh, so I think what this indicates, like you said, it's, it's high strategic value and it's what the industry is uh, looking for. The other thing I do is I look at the level of quotes, right? Uh, is it the design manager? Uh, is it the VP? Uh, here we have CEOs and serious heavyweights, pa Panos Panay and Hiroshi Lockheimer. I mean, heavy, heavy duty. And then the CEOs from these smartphones, Alex Cho. Uh, we had him on an insider this week yep. uh, or broadcast uh, uh, this week. And John Franco, uh, Lancey, who I've also known uh, for, for 20 years, uh, president of, um, uh, of Lenovo. So uh, I, this, is, this, this is a huge deal. And, and by the way, uh, you know, I, I couldn't believe uh, the level of partner, but I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because if I look at the three things that – uh, Cristiano uh, and the company had had promised. Uh, they had promised uh, first um, they would ac uh, accelerate 5G, right? Remember, they pulled it in uh, about a year. And what happened at Mobile World Congress is they had 45 partners uh, across the globe. You, you probably remember the uh, uh, the photo. I ended up getting food poisoning. That's why I remember um, <laughs> uh, that's so well. And it was in my room. I literally left that announcement and went into my room and hid. Uh, and then when it said it wanted to virtualize an edge infrastructure with VRAN, it pulled together 15 key partners. And here we are with compute. Uh, and the company gets initial support from 18 uh, partners. 
Yeah, and you know, I know we wrap. We've got to head to a CES event for uh, for Microsoft. In fact, uh, is coming up here, Pat. But um, that extended into uh, their AR, XR, VR strategy across the board. I think Qualcomm's been very bullish on partnerships, um, understanding you know that between the licensing and technology business, it just is in the company's best interest. But I think we can kind of leave it here and just say very important move. It's going to be something to sort of watch develop over the next year. There's some big tie ups, uh, acquisitions that are going to be going through a, a level of review throughout 2021 could definitely make a change. Apple's get involvement in making its own chips, certainly sh change shape. Um, you see Intel and AMD all making moves, uh, chiplets and disaggregated designs. Uh, as well as fabulous uh, strategies, you know, in, in the case of Intel starting to be discussed. So all these companies are making big moves. Qualcomm showing here, they're making big moves too, and they definitely plan to participate beyond just their typical smartphone space. Pat. That's right. And uh, um, like you had mentioned, I want to reinforce, uh, I don't want to Babe Ruth this. There's a lot of uh, execution that, that goes between uh, uh, now and, and a final product. Uh, I know that Nuvia's uh, initial plan was they were going to tape out this year, uh, and you can uh, you know add a year and a half to that to get to get a part. But uh, uh, my guess is that uh, Qualcomm will retarget that those designs uh, from a, a server data center play to a kind of a PC cent like likely a PC centric edge in automotive. Uh, and maybe even uh, and maybe even mobile, L likely, likely mobile. But there's a lot of work to go, and they're going to pour a lot of investment in this. Uh, but uh, uh, great to see you, buddy, in the yeah, morning. Great morning. Let's, uh, let's off, jump off on. CES. Off to CES we go, man. But uh, this is exciting. I always love hearing about these tie-offs, uh, these t you know, these tie-ups of, of – of exciting, interesting companies and big, strong companies, and seeing how they come together. But yeah, it's like the fourth or fifth inning here. We got yeah. we got game to play. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for uh, showing up on this uh, early morning. If uh, you're in the United States, uh, if uh, if you're in Europe, good afternoon. In Asia, good night. Uh, take care and have a, a great day. If you like what you've heard, go to our YouTube channel and press that subscribe button. Take care.